Hello there. We are looking today at Nitro V Steel. We've got a knife made by a maker called Alex Dron. I couldn't find much about the gentleman online, but it's a uh, been sourced by Chris, one of my viewers, solely for the purpose, or sent to me solely for the purpose of taking it here and testing this steel. So it is a beautiful little knife. He's done a really good job on the grinds, of course. The grinds are excellent, really even, nice high saber grind. Um, almost a full flat. Uh, they have fairly substantial stock, I'd say getting towards the 4mm uh, level at the thickest point. And you've got some micata handles which have a really nice little layer, or nice little level of machining. So uh, a real sort of little pull here to sit your pinky finger in when you grip. Really, really comfortable in the hand. I find a really nice little knife indeed. So must give shout outs to Alex Drun. I don't know the man, but uh, Chris has uh, sourced this knife from him and it is lovely. So good job, man. Um, but yes, Nitro V Steel is what, uh, why we're here, because I haven't had anything to do with this steel before, um, and I'm very interested to see how it does. Looking at it on the Z-Knives app, not super remarkable with what it's made of. So the Z-Knives app likens it to AEBL steel with small amounts of vanadium, or 14C28N steel with small amounts of vanadium. So I'll put the recipe up here, all the elements involved. So you see pretty basic levels of carbon, enough chromium to make it a pretty stainless knife. Um, you know, all the little stuff like the manganese, niobium, or no, nitrogen. So the nitrogen, I guess you're looking at making a uh, similar steel to 14C28N at least. Should be extra good for the stainlessness. Got some phosphor, some silicon, some sulfur. It's, yeah, um, seems like a really standard kind of stainless, but what I've, uh, when I read on, it seems to be really geared towards the knife maker, the experimenter on the heat treats, the uh, wanting to put thin edges on a knife while still being durable. So maybe in that same realm of thought as say using ADCIV2 steel, which is a non-stainless steel, but again, sort of a well-regarded sort of overall tough performer, which also holds a good edge, but perhaps just maybe made to more of an all-rounder type steel. So this has the added benefit of being probably quite stainless as well. So. Excited to see how it does. Uh, we've got just got the um, the original edge on at the moment, so we're looking here at um, really nice, fine, they're able to curl and shred that paper really well. So we're going to use the um, original edge first, and then I might put my own edge on it afterwards and see how it goes then. So uh, the original edge is looking quite nice. It looks like it's at about 17 degrees anyway. So. Quite nice, and this Rockwell is at 61. So I do notice um, some fellas can push this still up to 64. I've seen, uh, and yeah, everything in between. So from about 58 to 64, you can find your Nitro V knives at, which will, yeah, 58, super tough. 64 edge retention is kind of a rough way to think of it, at any rate. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cut rope with the knife, which is the twisted sisal rope. We're going to do that until it no longer does what I was just doing to the paper. That'll be the, the number of rope cuts that it does before it stops doing that. And I'll stop every so often and check. That'll be the result. You can see all my results for every steel test I've done in a Google document down below, painstakingly maintained by my buddy Dave, doing really well there. Dave, thank you, I don't thank you enough. Let's enter this into the annals of knife history by giving it a run through.
So that cut 350 times. I am very surprised given you can usually, I've usually been able to in the past sort of look at the rough ingredients and have an idea of how it's going to go. I think what's happening here is it's a slightly harder steel than usual, so it's a 61 which is good. But what I believe is happening, this is just, and usually I guess I have to do a bit of it myself, so I'll get a factory edge knife, you know, from like Spyderco or something and I'll have to take it back a little bit and make the, you know, make it how I like it and then, then I can get it to cut really, really well. I think this knife's just come like that already. This is obviously a very skilled knife maker who does appear to have, on his thicker stock knife, a particularly stable geometry to just keep on cutting through. What is some, dis you know, this is bad stuff to cut with a knife. Like this, this will take the edge off of the lower end steels really, really quickly. I'm just really surprised given the ingredients list that it did so well. 350 cuts with, you know, what is admittedly a very, very nice looking edge. So it's a mirror polished edge that is very, very evenly done. Appears to be within the, it's 17 degrees-ish by the looks of it. Um, yeah, it's just come in that final, it's come in the unleashed state, if you remember my old unleashed videos. That's how it arrived. So, and I guess it's not surprising from, you know, a, a home knife maker is generally going to have that extra level of, you know, intensity to him about getting all the things just right. And he definitely looks like he's got this just right.